Hey guys, it's me and I'm making a video on cooking some vegan food because I'm gonna be vegan for a month. I've been having a lot of junk food and it's really bad for your diet. I've been feeling really horrible and I've been vegetarian for a month before and at the end of it I felt great. Uh, as long as you keep your diet uh, nice and healthy and you watch what you're eating, then it should be perfectly fine to go vegan or vegetarian with no risk if you do it the right way anyway. But uh, I know a few of my friends on Facebook are vegetarian and or vegan and I know it's hard to find the best food or like something that appeals to you all the time but I'm gonna try to replicate something that I think you guys might like so uh, without further ado I'll try to get started I'm just on my kitchen counter right now which isn't very big but I'm working on it and I'm recording off my phone but it's not too bad I think so uh, I actually went to the store today, and I know we don't have all that much money, but I think I wasted $20 on some ingredients. A lot of it is, most of it can be in your household anyway. I'm going to use just the things that I bought and whatever I had lying around the house. Uh, the things I'm going to use for this video only costed about like $10. And I'm not going to use all of it. I'm only going to use some of it for a portion for me. So if you did this correctly, you could probably feed several people or one person for several days. So uh, let's get started and I'll show you what I have in my shack of the house. So here in my refrigerator, I know, don't look, it's horrible, but... Uh, I have some garlic, jelly, I'm actually only going to list the things that are vegan because otherwise it's out of the question. So let's go garlic, uh, jelly, I've got some uh, jelly, uh, sweet relish, mustard, sriracha, ketchup, uh, tortillas, green tea, ginseng with honey, Arizona. <laughs> Uh, pickles, blueberries, a watermelon, which I will use in a different video, don't you worry. Uh, portobello mushrooms, uh, romaine lettuce, avocado, cilantro, potato, onions, and that's everything in my refrigerator. I don't really have anything in my freezer other than some frozen berries that I'm not going to use. And I don't have anything in my pantry other than some cereal, which I'm not really going to use. I also have some ramen noodle, but I'm not going to use it in this video. I'm going to go with a salad. And I have this cheat sheet that I prepared earlier, as any good cook should do. You should always plan ahead, because organization will keep you on track. You won't forget anything at the end, which I have done plenty of times. But today, I hope that I don't mess up because this video isn't going to be that long, I hope. I'm not sure. It's four minutes already and I haven't done anything. But, uh, like in cooking shows and stuff and they prepare everything ahead of time, I'm not doing that. I'm preparing as I go, and I'll be pausing the video. So, for you guys, it'll feel like 30 minutes tops or something. And for me, it'll be like two hours. And then I'll probably eat it at the end, because it's for me. So, yeah. But of course, if you guys have some of this stuff around lying in your house, feel free to do it. Uh, feel free to take from whatever I tell you, and I want to be here to teach you guys something. And, uh, yeah, call me out on anything, too, if you want, and I'd like to hear your guys' ideas. So, I'm gonna pull some stuff that I think I'm gonna use, and, yeah. Okay, you guys, so what I pulled 
was uh, some portobello mushrooms, extra virgin olive oil, orange, onion, avocado, garlic, pickles, mustard, sriracha, uh, romaine lettuce, and the rest of the stuff I'll be using, everyone should have in their house. And keep in mind, guys, uh, I want to say get a good spice rack. Spices and herbs are your best friend, especially when you don't have a lot of fresh food to work with. Uh, I forgot to get lemons, but I have some lemon pepper, so hopefully that'll uh, help things out a little bit. But uh, let's get started. And the first thing I'm going to do... Well, actually, uh, my idea is going to be a portobello mushroom salad with fried pickle spears and a tangy sriracha dressing. Does that sound good? It sounds good enough to me. I mean, we'll, we'll see. So, yeah. So, let's start cutting. Orange. Uh, let's get these mushrooms. Nice thin strips. Don't forget, be clean. Because all of this isn't, although all of this is going into the same plate, it doesn't always mean that all of it is going to be in direct contact all the time. Sometimes it's okay, but uh, right now I don't want the oranges and my mushrooms to mix because they're not going to be on the plate together in the same form. So just be clean guys when you're cooking. <laughs> Next, we're going to get a pickle. I'm sure your guys aren't all fans on pickles and such, but if you're vegan, don't be so picky. <laughs> There's already so less stuff that you can get already, but we made some nice spears here, and yeah. Let's get some onion. I don't need a whole bunch, it's only for one person. And I'm going to get some of this or a rough chop on my dressing. Avocados next. It's a nice one. If you're vegan and you don't love avocado, then I don't know what's wrong with you. Keep in mind guys, clean up as you go. Uh, like when I first started, you saw the junk I have now, and now half of it is gone because I'm not really working with a whole lot of ingredients. But yeah, just clean up as you go. It's a really good idea. I wonder if you guys can hear them. The music in the background too well. It's at the drive-in. It's one of my favorite bands, but I have lots of favorites. Okay, next we are getting some cilantro. It looks like it's already pre-washed. Make sure that all your stuff is already washed before you cut, because you don't want any dirt inside of your food, obviously. I also really like cilantro, 
I don't know if it's just because I'm Mexican, but I think it's delicious. And it smells great. So, yeah. Cilantro is has really good flavor, and you can use it in a whole lot of ways, not just Mexican food. Uh, cilantro can be used in a lot of Asian dishes, and, I mean, nowadays you can put it in whatever you want because no one can tell you what to do. So, yeah. <laughs> Next is the romaine. I really like Caesar salads too, and it's kind of sad because I haven't had a good one in a while, and now I can't have one until at least another month because Caesar salad, Caesar dressing is not vegan, it has eggs in it and anchovies, so that's just too bad, but I'll deal with it. See, my board is still nice and clean. And I've got all of my ingredients laid out and organized, so it makes everything a lot easier. So we got all the cutting done. Now let's go to the next step. We're going to start uh, sauteing and cooking some stuff. And yeah, it's going to be kind of hard for me to do this because I might have to just hold the phone so let's see how this goes all right as a general rule when you're sauteing stuff you want to make sure that your pan is on high heat and you put in your olive oil or your butter in this case i'm going to be using olive oil because butter is obviously non-vegan so we're going to have our pan on high Add some olive oil. Olive oil, by the way, isn't as expensive as some people might think. Uh, you can get a whole 25 fluid ounce bottle for like five bucks at Walmart. So it's, it's not that expensive. Plus it's really good for you. Uh, doctors, well some doctors, I've heard doctors say that a teaspoon of olive oil a day will help your heart a lot and it's just really great for cooking in the first place so if you're into cooking get yourself some extra virgin olive oil it has a lot of great flavor in it too so you can tell that your olive oil is hot when you can see that it moves really well and flowy um, I'm sure most of you guys know that but yeah uh, if any oil or fat starts to smoke that means it's going into a smoke point and at that point it's flammable so please be careful uh, ideally you don't want it to be that hot but if you want to do things like breading and stuff then you're gonna want it that hot but for our purposes you just want it nice and hot so it gets a nice sizzle And yeah, we're gonna add our mushrooms because they're nice and thick-ish. They're not like super thick, but they're not super thin either. So they should cook around the same time as the onions are going to cook. You do have to be careful about this because you don't want to add something that is gonna take like five minutes to cook and then add something else that is going to take like only a few seconds to cook because then your the other th item is going to overcook before the before your five minute item cooks so that's not good but right now we're just having the onions and mushrooms in there and we're also going to add some garlic and by the way guys uh basic flavor <laughs> Uh, garlic, salt, pepper are your best friends, and a lot of people uh, don't know how to properly season stuff, and don't be afraid to add your salt and pepper because uh, it gives off more flavor than 
like, I don't know, like don't just add a little pinch of salt, a little bit of pepper. You want to make sure that you can taste all of it because if you don't, then you're just wasting it and it's just no good. I'm a big salt fan. Lots of people are salt fans. <laughs> so yeah, I'll tell you guys a story about seasoning and salt some other time, but it's really important, trust me. <laughs> you can always stir with a stick or a spatula or something, but to be honest, the less dishes you use, the better it is for you. Because, I mean, if you get a spatula for this, you get a spatula for something else, you got a spoon to, like, do something else with, I mean, use one knife, clean your knife, use it again, use one pan if you only have to saute a few things, like, don't overcomplicate things just because, like, I don't know, I don't want to say because you're too lazy to clean it up as you go, but I'm just saying, use the least amount of dishes as possible. And it takes practice, but as long, like, when you start cooking more, you get used to it. Like, it's really not as complicated as it might seem, and it's just better off for you after you're done. You don't have a huge pile of dishes. So right now, it's looking pretty done-ish. Uh, it's starting to smell really good. Uh, just make sure everything's cooked through, garlic, onions, mushrooms, and right before you finish, you're going to start to add your cilantro. You don't want to add it too soon, like I said, it cooks really quickly, so add it at the end. Now it smells really good, plus cilantro, so I mean, three times better, right? <laughs> And that's what we have. Set that off to the side for a moment, and let's get on to the next part. Okay, so breading is usually flour, then egg, then breading, and then you throw it in the fryer. But since we're trying to be vegan, I can't use any eggs, so we're gonna have to use something else to get the pickles nice and sticky so they can uh, take in the outer layer uh, which is going to be a mixture of salt, uh, flour, pepper, and cornstarch. Cornstarch is really good for frying and it gives it a really nice texture on the outside but yeah I mean don't take my word for it try it for yourself sometime. Uh, you don't need a whole bunch of oil as long as you uh, rotate it constantly and yeah uh, let's wait for this oil to get nice and hot and let's start breading those pickles okay so uh, here's our flour and we're gonna use some cornstarch to cut into that you might want to just do straight up cornstarch and that's it it's totally up to you uh, we're gonna get our salt good amount of salt. I mean, you want to be able to taste it, and especially if you're cutting it with some flour and cornstarch, you, you're you going to get less flavor, so you have to add a little more. And that's just how it is. So, don't be afraid to salt and pepper, guys. <laughs> uh, here's the pepper. Good amount of pepper. <sighs> okay. Okay. So, I kind of figure that the pickles are kind of wet enough, so I'm going to try. A lot of cooking is, uh, a, like, attempt, how do they say it, like, uh, well, you try it, and if you, if it doesn't work, you try it again a different way. Uh, I don't know why I can't think of the phrase right now, but it's whatever. So we're just going to try it without adding any more wetness to it because the pickles are already pretty wet. Uh, I was thinking of maybe putting a little bit of mustard on the outside of them, 
so they can stick a little bit better, but it looks like they'll fry up just fine. So let's get all those floured up and the oil should be getting pretty hot. Uh, as a general rule for oils, uh, if you're frying stuff at home, uh, medium high is a pretty good temperature. If you have a candy thermometer, uh, 375 degrees is perfect for frying things. And if you don't, just go medium, medium high. Uh, if it starts smoking, lower it down a little bit because you don't want it smoking. It'll light on fire eventually. <laughs> so yeah. Oil kind of does take forever to heat up, but you know, that's just how it is. At least you guys don't have to wait through all of it. <laughs> so, uh, of course, I can't record two things at once, kind of. It's going to be really hard, so I'm just going to do all of this in parts. Uh, usually I'd be working on something else right now, because uh, the next step is going to be the dressing. But I'll just wait until I finish this part, and then I'll get that next part done. So a good way just to test if the oil is hot is just dip whatever you're frying in there for a little bit and see how it's going. And it looks like it's going to be hot enough now, so I'm just going to go for it. And you guys, be careful when you're frying stuff. Hot, hot oil hurts a lot. I don't know if you knew. So yeah, it's getting nice and toasty up in there. So they should be done in, I don't know, a few minutes, less, more or less. Uh, working with oil is always pretty messy, so if you have a lid, it's always nice. Uh, so yeah, let's just wait for those to cook up. So it's starting to smell actually really, really good. Like, I'm really hungry right now, and it's kind of killing me. But uh, as a general rule with frying stuff, uh, oil and water does not like to mix. And you can tell when something is done, usually when it's floating with most things, or when it stops bubbling. That means that there's a greatly less amount of water inside of whatever you're trying to fry. And they're looking like they're about done. Those look pretty nice. <laughs> They're like pickle french fries. So let's get those out of there and let's get on to the next step. So it actually looks like I'm making pretty good time because we're at uh, because we're at uh, 18 minutes now and which isn't too bad. I mean I'm doing okay. I thought it was gonna be like 30 minutes. Uh, I only have the dressing left to do, and we'll plate everything up all nice-like. Uh, so we're going to be making an emulsified dressing. And as a general rule with emulsified dressing, sorry by the way if I'm saying as a general rule a lot. It's just my high school teacher said that a lot. So I think it rubbed off on me a little bit. But anyway, with emulsified dressings, it means you're going to add your flavors, whatever you want to throw in. I'm going to be using sriracha, mustard, uh, garlic, and some other stuff. And you're going to throw all of that in to either a mixing bowl, a blender, or a food processor. Uh, I would go with the food processor because it's just the fastest way of doing it. Uh, they're kind of annoying to clean up though, but whatever you want. Uh, you're going to add all of your like main ingredients, everything except for your fat which would generally be eggs, uh, butter, or olive oil. And I'm going to be using olive oil because obviously it's vegan and olive oil is great, especially for emulsifying dressings. So let's get on that next. So this is a food processor I got at Walmart. It's a Black & Decker, which is generally a good brand, but uh, it's kind of a complicated machine, as most food processors are, but once it's yours for a while, you get used to it. Uh, they're really not that expensive, and they're really useful if you cook a lot. Uh, I actually don't even have a blender, I just have this. So, yeah. So we're gonna add 
the mustard. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Don't look at me. Don't look at me failing. Okay. Mustard. Sriracha. Sorry about all these cuts, guys. Uh, my phone isn't being very friendly with me. But, uh, so it kind of died, but I finished putting everything else in the blender. I'm still on a charger right now. Hopefully it doesn't die again. So I have everything in there. I have uh, some onion, cilantro, uh, sriracha, mustard, pepper, salt, uh, basil, oregano, uh, a little bit of white uh, distilled vinegar. Uh, I would have put some sherry or white wine or red wine in there or something, but I can't open my sherry bottle because it's been closed for so long and I really don't want to break it. So, yeah, uh, garlic, and yeah, so you got everything that you want to flavor your dressing with. And let's turn her on. So, like I said, it's a little messy, and it's going to be kind of hard to drip in our olive oil like this but I'm really liking the smell I'm getting from here. And I'm sure with the olive oil, it'll make a really nice dressing. So uh, I'm not gonna show it because it's gonna take really long and it's gonna be really hard for me to hold the phone while I do it. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab your olive oil and there's a slot right here on most food processors. You're just gonna uh, drip in your olive oil through there and uh, really slowly and let it all absorb and it should start to thicken up and uh, yeah the flavor will get less harsh and you can use it as dressing uh, if it unemulsifies, emulsifies uh, you should just be able to shake it up and it should gather up again but if you do this correctly it should stay emulsified for a really long time and uh, stuff like this should last like a good week uh, depending on what you use so yeah I'm just gonna do that and you guys just trust me that's what I'm doing <laughs> uh, so now we're on to plating we're just gonna start with a simple bed of lettuce and then on top of that we're gonna throw the mushrooms and onions uh, then we add the mushrooms and onions and it smells really good right now. I would eat it just like that. Uh, I'll take pictures of it because it's kind of hard to see with the video. And by the way, sorry if it looks like I have a double chin because of the camera angle. I might have a double chin, but uh, it doesn't matter. It's not important. Just don't worry about the double chin. Anyway, uh, we're going to put a drizzle of this dressing that we made and it turned out pretty good. It's nice and thick now and I'm just gonna drizzle it on there. It's probably enough. I mean if you want more you can always get more and you can put some off to the side and you know do your own thing okay guys we have it all plated up and i hope you guys think it looks as good as i do but uh i got the pickles on there i got the avocado on there and garnished with cilantro i didn't mean to put this on a green plate but those are the only plates i have and i'll take pictures of it later and post it with the video but uh I hope you guys had fun. I know I had some fun and I hope you guys learned something and I hope you guys like this video and I mean if you see this on our YouTube channel and you think it's interesting then we would love it if you subscribed, if you gave us some suggestions 
and yeah, uh, let me know if you would eat this even if you weren't vegan or if you didn't like mushrooms. <laughs> and if you are vegan, then let me know if you think it's a good idea. Uh, it's going to be my first vegan meal for the month and I think I'm going to eat well tonight. But yeah, and see you. Uh, you guys on Friday and actually uh, my question to my brothers on the channel I'm not gonna ask one because I asked one last week and nobody made a video since then so that's too bad but uh, I'm sure we're all very busy 